Good afternoon and welcome to the first of our Kilachand Honors College Open House events. My name is Carrie Preston and I'm the director of Kilachand Honors College as well as a professor in the English department and the Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies program here at Boston University. It's my pleasure to welcome you here today and to congratulate you on your admission to Boston University and Kilachand Honors College. We'll start by introducing the other panelists for today's event. I am Linda Dorr. I am one of two associate directors here in uh, Kilachand Honors College, and I'm also a professor in chemistry with a um, secondary appointment in materials science and engineering. Again, welcome and congratulations. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us and congratulations again. Uh, my name is Esmeralda Arrison Palomera. I am a postdoctoral fellow at Kilachan Honors College and I joined Kilachan uh, last year. So I, I, am, well, I am just getting acquainted with Kilachan um, this year and I'm very excited to, um, to, to teach you a little bit more about, about the college and the university. Welcome. Hello, I'm Amy Fish. I'm also a postdoc here at Kilachand. Um, my background is in American studies. I study American culture and childhood, and I teach first year and senior courses here. And um, we're so glad to have you in this conversation. Hi guys, um, my name is Janki, but you guys can call me Jan. And I am a sophomore at Boston University and I am an English major in College of Arts and Sciences. Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Um, I'm currently a junior studying physics and philosophy in CAS and I'm really excited to have you guys all here. Hi everyone, my name is Marissa. I am a junior majoring in psychology in the College of Arts and Sciences with a minor in dance. Hello and welcome all. My name is Jackson and I'm also a junior in the College of Arts and Sciences and I study physics and mathematics here. So today's event, um, we are talking about the Kiloton curriculum. And um, we hope that you will notice that there are multiple open house events um, th through the next few weeks. And we hope that you will join us for many of them. So to begin with our mission, the Kilachand Honors College works to offer a challenging liberal education. We ground our courses in the goals of teaching creative thinking and problem solving that uses the tools of many different disciplines to engage with local and global challenges. Our curriculum lasts across the four years and it's um, integrated in that you have students from all the schools and colleges joining you through your coursework and of course in your living learning community. Kilachand fulfills the majority of our students general education requirements. The BU hub is Boston University's new and very ambitious general education program. Hub units are, are distributed across the student's curriculum and are earned both through the major, possibly minors, and also through Kilachand courses. So one way to think about the Honors College curriculum is that we offer honors general education and honors pathway through the BU hub. So you can see here our four year curriculum map. And today we'll be talking you through each of these courses, each of the years a little bit, um, and then bringing in some of the faculty and students to give you their perspectives on the experience of the curriculum. So starting with the first year, 
our students take a first year seminar, which is four credits each semester, as well as a two credit writing studio. Um, and to talk a little bit more about the experience of teaching in the writing studi studio, I'll bring in Dr. Arizona Palomera. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, I teach writing studios at Kilogent. I began teaching writing studios last fall, my first writing studio here. And um, for me, joining the university at the same time as most of my students um, and in the same uncertain and difficult moment really gave me an appreciation of the role that writing studio plays in creating space for community building for students. Um, Writing Studio is a two semester themed sequential course that introduces students to the college writing skills required by Boston University and Kilichand Honors College. The first semester uh, focuses on developing effective writing, note taking, discussion, and oral presentation and multimodal skills. While the second semester, um, the one we're in the middle of, focuses on, on um, on research methods and the completion of a capstone research paper on a topic of the student's choice, which if they choose to, they can carry on to the second, third, and even fourth year and, uh, and continue to pursue it in, in a final um, senior project. All studio sections share a common curriculum, course goals, and major required text. This academic year, our first year writing studio is organized around the theme of, of uh, power, protest, and politics. The theme for next year has not been selected yet, but like all previous themes, it will give students the opportunity to engage socially relevant text, attend co-curricular events, and, um, and write critically about these experiences. And, uh, and we hope you, you have a great experience that year too, and that you're able to attend all the amazing events that are organized for you. As you can see on the right side of your screen, and as Dr. Arizona Palomero referred to, a studio often includes co-curricular events um, in other years, visits to museums, and these kinds of events serve to inspire student writing. So we had a, a virtual remote residence um, with the executive producer of the FX comedy series, Dave this fall, which was very exciting. And so the students incorporated some of the, uh, the shows um, into the curriculum and wrote about that experience. As I mentioned, um, you also will be taking a first year seminar each semester of your first year. The seminar choices are incredible. I always wish I was taking half a dozen of them, if not all of them. Um, here on the slide, you can see one of our fantastic expert teachers, Sophie Godley, who teaches a seminar called Seeing Poverty. And um, just given that the pictures you have here, you can imagine some of the diverse material that Professor Godley brings into that course from historical material, visual material, film, TV. Um, she's, she's engaging with all of the many perspectives on what poverty means and how it signifies in American culture. To talk, before we progress here, to talk a bit more about teaching a first year seminar, I'll bring in Professor Dorr. So uh, I agree with Professor Preston. I would love to be taking the entire uh, Kilichon curriculum. The second best thing is to at least teach in it. Um, to give you some more um, titles from our fantastic first year seminars, um, a couple from the most recent offerings are Representation and Misrepresentation of History and Art, Reading Language in the Brain, um, and then Chance Fluctuations and Their uh, Relevance to Our Daily Lives. So I don't teach any of those. Um, but I developed one um, drawing on my background as a synthetic chemist called The Material World, 
easier shaped than shared. Um, uh, Jan was in my class this past spring of 2020, and I was lucky to also have Matt in my class in fall of 18. Um, and we've um, read a whole bunch of different materials, looking at our material world in a different way. Um, and the students in the classes are often encouraged to take courses out of their background. So though I had students with interests in economics and physics and math and other subjects, I didn't have chemistry students in the class, which means that there's a lot of exploration together of maybe unfamiliar territory. Um, and it's, it's really um, rewarding um, on all sides. And Professor Dora mentioned that Jan Bott had been in her first year seminar. We'll bring in Jan now to talk a little bit about the first year experience from the student side. Thank you, Carrie. Um, so as Professor Dora mentioned, I was in her material world class um, for my for the second semester of my freshman year. And it we learned a lot in that class and I really liked that class and I still remember a lot of things from that class. Um, the class was basically about um, natural resources like air, sunlight, water, et cetera, and about the chemical makeups of materials causing harm to these natural resources. And we learned about climate change denial and we learned about like the manipulation and over extraction of natural resources negatively affecting human lives. And since this was a fairly small class, all almost all seminars like are very, very small in terms of how many people are in that class. Um, in my class, there were only seven people and I, I was able to form like close friendships with all of them. I still talk to all of them. And it's because of these relationships, because because of the living learning community, like you're like like the people who you're in class with and may end up being your neighbors. Um, and so you form these this really close relationship with the people that you're studying with. And so you were able to have these very um, intimate yet very serious and very important conversations. Um, about the topic of the seminar, which for me was climate change um, in terms of the material world um, as Professor Dora already, as, her, as she's a chemist, as she already uh, talked about. Um, and I was, I, I still remember like this one conversation that we had about the Koch brothers and about how they were like funding these like conservative think tanks and how they were able to do that with no repercussions. We had like a very lengthy conversation about it. And I still remember it. I still like love bringing up this like one example to like like anytime I'm talking about like the responsibility of big corporations and so in this manner like a lot of the topics discussed in these first year courses not just seminar like in any of the courses like there's they're very relevant to like the current social political climate and in that you can you can bring it up um whenever you're talking about to anyone about any of the current social political um, issues, you can bring that up. And as an English major, I'm not particularly inclined to understanding and learning about chemistry concepts, um, but Professor Dora's enthusiasm and knowledge about the subject, as of course she's a chemist, um, and her willingness to help um, made the course really like extremely rewarding and very, very memorable. Thanks so much, Jan. Um, in the second or third year, our students take a sequence that we call the interdisciplinary approaches to global challenges sequence. And the general argument behind this set of courses is that you need the tools of all the disciplines to solve major problems such as climate change or the crisis of forced displacement. So we invite faculty teams to develop the courses together. Um, we'll have anywhere from three to six faculty engaged in teaching from their disciplines. To talk a little bit more about this experience, I will bring in our student, Matt Kim. Thanks, Carrie. Um, so as she mentioned, the second year, you guys are gonna have a two, two part course. The first year is about climate change and the second part changes per semester. So when I took it, and I'll be talking about the first part, which is HC301. So basically it's a class about climate change and examining climate change with an interdisciplinary lens, which is the whole point of Kilichan. And I really think that this is one of the courses that really embodies the core of the Kilichan curriculum because the professors we had came from the humanities, the environmental sciences, 
and political science. And we had a faculty size of about, I think, five. And for five professors from different backgrounds to all teach the same subject is something that was really enlightening for me and a lot of my peers. And I think it's an experience it's an experience that you really won't get anywhere else. And I think it really opens up your eyes to how interdisciplinary a subject like climate change really can be. A lot of people just think of climate change as, oh, it's science, but it's not. It's public policy. It's public writing. It, it is science. All that combined in one place. And I think this course, as you explore the different facets of climate change, you will learn to both read and write in a public, public manner while also being able to disseminate knowledge that you learn to your peers. So one of the assignments that I remember that I actually had a really fun time doing was you have to write a mock policy brief that's meant for a high standing public official from your hometown. And I mean, as a physics major personally, I've never had to do anything like this. Um, but it was a really good experience to learn how to read through the literature, analyze it, put it into a big paper that's really, you could send to anyone from the, your hometown. And I, people who are actually interested in public policy, you could really submit this to an official from your hometown. Um, and another assignment I remember was something called a place-based essay. And essentially, it's just a very narrative and literature-based writing project, which is nothing like a public policy, because that's public policy. But it's also nothing like science of climate change. So you can see that there's so many parts of different disciplines that you'll be able to explore in this course. And I think this course is really helpful in showing what Kilichan is really about. Thanks so much, Matt. I teach in the 302 course, which is currently focused on the crisis of forced displacement. Um, and one of my colleagues that I teach with is pictured here, Professor Mohamed Zaman from Biomedical Engineering. Um, we also have a social scientist on our team, an anthropologist, um, another engineer, and a professor of international relations. And, and we're seeking to look at displacement from all of the crucial perspectives. Um, our argument in part is that displacement involves every facet of being human. So we talk about gender, we talk about race and racialization. We talk about technological interventions. Matt mentioned writing different kinds of papers using different genres to engage with material. And I just met with one of the students in our class um, who at the end of our meeting sent off an op-ed about the refugee crisis to our local newspaper, the Boston Globe. Professor Zaman himself uh, writes op-eds nearly every week and, and one of his op-eds is pictured here on the slide. This is an incredibly exciting class to be a part of. Um, one of the things I love most is getting to learn right alongside the students. I'm not an expert on every piece of what I teach. Sometimes I have to say, and it can be scary to say this as a professor, I don't know the answer to that question. How can we figure that out or who can we ask? Um, and that's one of the things I love about teaching in Kilachand. Another feature of Kilachand that is really exciting is that we have developed an experiential learning program. Our students prior to the pandemic were able to travel with our interdisciplinary program for forced displacement studies to locations that they learned about in 302. Um, we have traveled to Lebanon in partnership with the American University in Beirut and studied the Syrian refugee crisis, including uh, being able to go to Syrian refugee camps and conduct needs assessment and develop projects to help alleviate problems. And we're eager after the pandemic to be able to travel and learn in the field again. 
closer to home our students are involved and still involved in the Boston Area Health Education Center, where they're teaching students from the Boston Public Schools about health careers. This is a pipeline program, getting diverse students interested in health careers. And just this year, we launched a Kilachanda internship program. Our students have very recently in the past few weeks applied with internships with nonprofit organizations in mind and our hope is to be able to fund quite a number of those internships this summer. So jumping ahead into to a set of classes that students usually take in their third year, although there's flexibility built into the curriculum to enable students to study abroad or pursue other kinds of experiences. Um, in often the, the third year, sometimes the second year, our students take HC 401 epistemologies and the process of inquiry. And in fact, Professor Dorr has just taught this class the previous semester. So I will let her speak to the design of this course. So, uh, hello again. This course has um, grown and changed a lot in my time in, um, in Kilachand. It's always uh, been um, a vehicle for students to start to explore their Keystone project and to try to learn how um, projects can be um, investigated through interdisciplinary perspectives. So we want to teach them how, we want to teach our natural scientists how social scientists do their work. We want to help social scientists understand how natural sciences are different uh, to help um, people uh, from both more um, analytical backgrounds see how different creative processes can be um, also brought to bear on these important questions. Um, the, um, this class, 401, uh, is um, often team taught by uh, three faculty members from the natural sciences, social sciences and humanities around a common theme. So we've had a variety of different uh, themes and uh, again, the time I've been in, in Kilachand and the course that I was a part of this past, uh, past fall was around water, which is a very broad uh, topic, obviously, but we looked at many different aspects of water in our um, contemporary world. So students certainly had already had some exposure to how the water uh, in our hydrosphere is changing through uh, climate change, global warming, rising sea levels. We also looked at um, desalination as a need um, to make more water available, for example, to, to the world. We looked at the public water um, challenges uh, in a country with aging infrastructure, namely, say, the Flint uh, water crisis. Um, with lead in the water in, in Flint, Michigan. We encourage students to look at things um, all around the globe with different aspects of water. And we even had a group that decided to go off planet and look at water on Mars. Um, we encourage them to look broadly and then help them to develop um, the skills for how they might narrow down their um, ambitious projects to something that's tractable um, for a student um, within Kilachan. So it's a really exciting course on all sides to be involved as an interdisciplinary faculty team and to uh, help the students develop their ideas as we explore a bit more of the world together and in particular, how we explore that world. In the junior year, either semester, students also typically take the, the proposal workshop this course is just two credits and is devoted to the purpose of helping students develop their senior research proposal, um, the Keystone project, and that involves everything from literature review to defining a problem, developing methods, assessing feasibility, and writing a budget. I teach this course uh, along with several other faculty at Kilachand, um, and I just love it because every semester I learn a ton, and I'm learning from the students about their research expertise. Uh, when I taught this course in the fall, I was lucky enough to have Marissa Cardi in my class. So I will bring her in to tell us a little bit more about 451 and also the, the junior experience. Awesome. Thank you so much, Professor Preston. Um, so I'll start off with the process of inquiry. So I took this course last fall and on the first day of class, my professor said, you guys are going to do a group project on maps 
and you need to incorporate law, math, and rhetoric. And you also need to do a project with your two group mates. So I'm a psychology major. One of my group mates was a health sciences major and the other one was a physics major. And I thought, oh gosh, how am I possibly going to do a project that combines all of these things? Um, but with learning about the different research methods throughout the whole semester, we developed this really cool project that I'm super proud of looking at health disparities in Boston. And the way that we did this was we looked at subway model maps. So we looked at maps that took disparities in the rates of certain diseases in Boston and how they were different in different neighborhoods. Um, so we could see looking at the subway model, just a few T stops away, the disparities in these two diseases were drastically different. Um, so we created that project and that was a really cool way to actually do interdisciplinary research. And as for the proposal workshop, it was an honor to take this class with Professor Preston. Um, one of my favorite classes that I've ever taken at BU, similar to the first year seminars, it's a small class. So you really get to develop um, a close bond with the other people in your class. And just to give you um, a glimpse of some of the projects that people worked on, my freshman year roommate is doing a project on luxury handbags and the psychology and economics behind why people buy them. Um, the student that I did peer review with through the whole semester, both of us ended up getting really invested in each other's projects because we saw the development of them throughout the course of the semester. Um, so he's doing a documentary film on the American road trip, which I can't wait to see in the future. Um, but like Professor Preston said, the course is really designed to get you to think about not only what are you passionate about, but what research needs to be done? What can you contribute to the field? What are the implications of what you're going to contribute? And also, is it possible to do this in your senior year, um, you know, just as a two credit or four credit um, class in your senior year? So yeah, two amazing courses and great opportunities to learn a lot, not only from the faculty, but like Professor Preston said, from the other students. Marisa, before you go, um, because I know about your Keystone project in development, I wonder if you might give us a little taste of what that's all about. Of course. So students can do the Keystone um, with an honors thesis or like the engineering senior design project. And that's something that will also get you an honors in your department and the Kilichon, but you can also choose to do the Keystone project, with his, which is the pathway that goes just through Kilichon. The Keystone project is designed for really interdisciplinary creative projects that wouldn't fit into a 100 page thesis paper. Um, so for my project, I'm going to be writing a poetry collection on the psychology of well being. So it's going to be dealing with how can poetry inform and speak back to research on psychology and well-being. How can it fill in the gaps that research can't fill? Um, and it's also going to be um, using the forms of word and um, writing in research. So things like a Likert scale, which if any of you have taken a survey, it's like never, rarely, often, sometimes, or always. So things like that um, in the actual poetry. So very interdisciplinary project definitely doesn't fit into any other box um, and I'm really lucky that Kilichon is supporting me in this project. And I can't wait to read this project um, and to hear the presentation that Marissa will give next year. Um, we look forward to hearing all of the presentations from our seniors the last weekend in April um, when we have our celebratory Keystone Symposium. Uh, so during the senior year, a, a lot of the, the effort of Kilichon students goes into their Keystone project or their senior research or creative project. These, as you've gathered begin in the junior year with the proposal. So they're really year and a half long projects and they're impressive and exciting. While students are working on their, their Keystone projects, they're also taking a two credit seminar fall and spring that um, serves the purpose of supporting their Keystone project, but also as a capstone to their Kilachand experience. And Dr. Fish is currently teaching the senior seminar, seminar. So I'll ask her to talk a little bit about that. Hi everyone. So um, the seniors are uh, a really exciting group to teach because they are culminating their work with these uh, really skillful and sophisticated projects. And they've been driving and shaping their own work in ways that are 
far beyond what I um, imagined in my own undergraduate experience. And the courses um, that they take alongside their, their senior project and keystone project work um, are meant to help them ask in rigorous ways, uh, what are you going to do with your education? Uh, what does it mean to you? How do you want to use it professionally, but also personally? Um, so in the, in the fall, students take seminars that explore um, single exceptional figures, um, their lives and their works, their choices, their mistakes and their achievements. And those people range from um, the 19th century mathematician Philippa Fawcett to um, Malcolm X. And um, students explore these single figures through um, many different methods and disciplinary approaches, thinking rigorously about the complexities of, of a life and a career that's been not only um, worked at, but also lived. And in the spring, students take this focus on um, people in process into projects that explore um, lesser known figures of their own choosing. Um, some of my students did projects on um, a groundbreaking but little known woman archeologist. Uh, there was a project on a family member who was a musician, a traveling musician, and then um, spent a lot of life caring for um, a loved one with disabilities. So they could be personal or they could be historical. And um, students constellated all of these figures together to really think about um, the choices that they're going to make, about what they admire in the lives of others. Um, and meanwhile, they're also doing reflective writing on their four years in Kiloton. Um, and we employ here the, the research on cognitive benefits of reflection. So some of this more personal, more uh, thoughtful, and first person voice writing has been shown to deepen learning and um, understanding. So um, these aspects are all resonating and supporting with students' keystone projects as they're uh, figuring out how they want to apply the work of their last four years and, and how they wanna share it, what, what makes it meaningful to them and to um, and to a larger public. And so as we're exploring these figures, the students are also uh, constantly supporting each other's keystones through uh, weekly check-ins. They troubleshoot obstacles that they're having, whether um, they're working on assembling a device to save uh, babies in intensive care or writing um, a children's book celebrating difference. Um, and they're exchanging their writing for feedback from each other and uh, preparing their presentations for the Keystone Symposium, uh, which you'll be hearing about in, in future events. So by the end of the year, um, students have brought their Keystone projects to completion in uh, supported ways. So they're supported by their own advisors, their own labs or majors, but also in this, this community space from their last four years. And they've thought deeply about what um, what their college experience has meant to them and and what they what matters to them in taking it into their future lives and work um, and they're it's a joy to to explore this with them and it's a really a really special and energetic uh, conversation to have with all of that experience behind them and um, and their very exciting uh, career plans ahead Thanks so much. As, as Dr. Fish mentioned, um, there are future events really focused on the Keystone project um, and other aspects of the Kilachan experience. Throughout the, the four years that students spend with us at Kilachan Honors College, we also organize an array of co-curricular events. Some of them develop from courses. So in the example you hear on the slide, um, we have a course on race in America, and we invited to come to be in residence at Kilachan for several days, Dr. Shamel Bell, who is one of the original organizers of Black Lives Matter, as well as a participant in the film The Hate You Give. 
And we had a series of events with Dr. Bell over the course of several days. Um, and the class, of course, discussed her visit, but these events were also open to the larger Kilachand community. To talk a little bit about co-curricular events and that experience, I'll invite Jackson Wallace to come on in. Yeah, hello everyone. So for me, I think the greatest benefit of the co-curriculars are really being able to take full advantage of being in this kind of uh, environment of learning. Uh, you know, the advantage of being somewhere like Kilichin is that there are all these opportunities like the co-curriculars that are out there waiting for you to make the most of them. Um, and you can certainly get a wide range of information out of these events. Um, so for instance, one co-curricular that stands out in my mind as just being rather entertaining was um, we had a talk from a microbiologist talking about her experiences working in a microbrewery, which is uh, probably not maybe what you come to college thinking you're gonna wind up doing, but she seems to have a lot of fun doing that. Um, but they can also be a little more uh, serious or informative. Uh, so for instance, we've had panels about um, the crisis of mass incarceration, or there was a panel talking about mental health and OCD and stigmatization so you really do get quite a wide diversity of events. And I think one of the final things that's uh, really neat about the co-curriculars is that you have the chance to meet such really fascinating and interesting people. Uh, so for instance, um, of course, this year, the co-curriculars were a little different, less uh, personal, but um, we invited uh, author Teju Cole to come and give a talk. And it was definitely fascinating to, you know, sort of see someone who you may have read their works or known what they do, um, see them in a more personal light, really getting interviewed in a uh, more informal setting. Um, or for instance, there was a co-curricular where uh, astrophysicist uh, Hakim Lusei came and gave a talk. And so it was really cool to be able to actually go up and talk to him. Uh, and this is someone who I'd like seen on TV before. Um, and so I wish I could talk uh, about all the all the co-curriculars that I've been to. I think I've been to must be like 16 at this point in my uh, path through Kilichin. Um, but there's, there's simply too many to go through. So I hope that, uh, you know, uh, you'll all be able to have your own uh, takeaways and memories from them. And we also invite students to propose co-curricular ideas. Um, so the one on mental health that Jackson mentioned was actually organized by one of our Kiloton Leadership Advisory Board members, um, also known as KLAB. And KLAB provides advice about the kinds of events that are interested in and sometimes organizes events like that one. So this was a quick dive through the Kilachand curriculum. And we have a few minutes to answer your questions. We also encourage you to talk with one of our fantastic Kilachand ambassadors. You've met a few of them here today, um, but they're available to you if you reach out. Um, the website is here for you to find information about them and to gather their contact information. This weekend, we will be, many of us, enjoying an incredible performance. This is the virtual premiere of an original musical written by our senior Issa Berry. Um, this was, of course, going to be a live performance, but Issa, like so many of our students, adapted in incredible ways to the pandemic and reimagined what performance could look like in a virtual mode. We invite you to join us for this performance. You can email Issa. The email address is here, um, and I think you'll be incredibly impressed about what she's managed to do with the musical. Other upcoming open house events are listed here. We'll be talking with advisors about our fantastic student support system at Kilachand. We'll be talking about Kilachand's living learning community, about the Keystone Project and experiential learning programs in more detail. And as our final event, probably best event, um, it will be a Kilachand student panel to answer your questions. So go to your BU portal to register for these events. And now we are happy to use the rest of our time to answer some questions that you may have. Please put your questions into the chat and um, 
We will answer as many as we have time for. So this is a question. Curious if many honors students also participate in research. I would love to pursue research at BU. What year do students most frequently begin? Um, so many of us could answer this question here. I'll actually bring in Professor Dorr to begin with because she's had many, many undergraduate students doing research in her lab. So um, thank you, Carrie. I, I want to say that students do research in all sorts of different areas. So often when, when people hear the word research, there's an association maybe with natural sciences and engineering. But one of the things you will experience in Kilachand is just how broad research can be. So um, and this is why, um, as Carrie said, many of us can, can speak to this question. Um, in the old fashioned sense of research, students start um, at all sorts of different times during their BU careers. So um, uh, there are, um, hmm. There are very many different ways that you can get involved in research, and the, um, the only places I think that research is required is in the College of Engineering um, uh, Design Projects. So in the College of Arts and Sciences, all research is optional. So how students get their, find their path there is extremely varied. Um, the best way to get involved in research is to talk to lots and lots of different people. Certainly talk to the professors, find out what they do, but you should talk to senior undergraduates. I highly recommend talking to graduate students. Any class where you have a TF or a TA, chances are that is a graduate student involved in research and they can tell you what they do. They can tell you what their lab is like and just ask lots of questions. Um, if you're a bit shy about approaching somebody in, in person, um, just email us, right? Um, my only recommendation on that is to, is to not send generic emails, but to make it specific. It can be it can be naive. That's fine. You're coming to university to learn. We all know that, and we welcome it, and we're excited to engage with young people who don't don't necessarily consider themselves experts, um, but are just interested. If all you have read is two paragraphs on on a website and you're fired up by that, then then send an email with that enthusiasm and asking about how to get um, involved. So there are lots and lots of different paths. There is funding. Um, through at the, at the university level through the undergraduate research opportunities program called Europe and many faculty members have um, other sources of funding to support you either during the academic year or during the summers um, and again other people can can speak to this point as well. I'll actually invite Dr. Fish to say a little bit about how research is incorporated from the very first year in our studio course. Sure so um, the second semester of studio is really focused on developing independent research and uh, creating uh, full fledged essays based on topics of students own design and um, so there's really a lot of support for figuring out how to build a research project from the ground up so when students do become involved with faculty through UBROP or in a lab, they know how to gather scholarly literature on a topic and insert themselves into a scholarly conversation. They know how to um, write up a method se uh, section, how to go seek out professors on the best way to approach a topic. Um, I have papers right now that students are developing on, um, I have one paper on um, the legal structures around the uses of patients' biomaterials bio, um, for um, research. And um, I have a paper on maternity harassment in Japan and its cultural effects. Um, and I have uh, one on the social science research on biases, racial biases in children and how picture books can address that. Um, so students are, uh, getting tons of feedback from each other about these projects and um, they have those skills uh, from the very first part of their uh, career in Kilijan. Great. Um, another question that has come up from several is about the, the 301, 302 sequence and, and its topics. These topics could change currently as Matt and I both mentioned 
Um, 301 is focused on climate change and 302 is focused on forced displacement. Um, and it's likely to be the same for the next year or so. Um, these problems remain and keep changing. So we keep adapting the course to the, the current crises that are represented by these challenges. But in the future, the topics might change. Um, Any of our students speak to a question about study abroad programs at Kilichand? Who studied abroad? I have studied abroad through the BU study abroad office. I'm not sure if this question is specifically about like the Lebanon trips. So I guess I can talk about, okay. Um, so the Kilichand curriculum is designed to be really flexible um, and the Kilichand faculty and staff are awesome and will help you do whatever you want to do. So it's already built in that you will be able to study abroad for at least one semester. Some people want to study abroad for a full year. And if you plan early and talk to your advisor, that's definitely something that um, can be made happen, can be made to happen. Um, I studied abroad in Denmark last spring. So unfortunately, I had to come home early because of the pandemic. Um, but how that worked with Kilishan, usually sophomore students take 301 in the fall and 302 in the spring and then they take 401 in the fall or spring of their junior year but that is flexible so i flipped it around i took 301 in the fall of my sophomore year no kilishan courses in the spring of my sophomore year because i was abroad um, and i'm currently enrolled in 302 even though i'm a junior so you can go anywhere in the world that you want that BU offers a program. I think they offer programs in 80 to 90 countries, something crazy like that. Um, so yes, you can absolutely study abroad with Kilichan. And as Marissa mentioned, we do have some um, travel experiential learning programs focused on forced displacement. Those are not an additional cost. There was a question about that. If there was an additional cost for those programs, those are supported by Kilichand, but other study abroad programs do have additional costs to them. Um, a question about how Kilichand affects social life. I think one of our students might jump on that one for us. Um, yes, I can talk about that. Um, so I, I was very scared like the first few weeks uh, of college because I couldn't like my social life was like absolutely zero. Like I had no friends because obviously it's college. You're not supposed to have friends in the beginning. Um, but Kiyachan really helped me make friends because because obviously it's like um, as I already said before, um, the people that you're in class with are also living in the same building as you. So you keep running into them. Like we have like, we have a study, uh, not a study. We have a common room on the ninth floor and we have a common room on the first floor. And um, like, you can go study up there whenever you want. Um, and I, I ran into like so many people that I went to class with um, on the ninth floor. And I just, I, I would just be like, like, let's sit together. Like, let's talk about class and like, let's do homework together. Um, and so that's how I, like how Kyoshin helped me make friends because it's such a small tight knit community. Um, and you, it's, it's easier for you to approach people that you like, you like, are in like a small like a smaller class with um which is why uh the first year classes really helped me make friends because a lot of the friends that i have now i met through like studio and through my seminars um as I already said also um so i also definitely do have friends who are not in the honors college but um it's the honors college makes it way easier um just because it's, there's like so much interaction that you can do and there's like so often that you see them and it's just everyone is so like nice and so willing to like talk to each other and like open up and it's just it's a very it's a very vibrant community. Another question that I think would be great for our students to answer: How much extra time and effort does Kilichum take up beyond usual academic work? Jackson, do you want to answer this one? Yeah, sure. So uh, for me right now, this semester, it takes up absolutely zero extra work because I'm not taking any Kilchin classes. But, you know, you may be in, um, I think this was said in an earlier answer, you could be anywhere from none like I am right now to up to six credits, maybe your uh, first year. And so I think that the level of work is about what you would expect from, you know, 
being in a four credit class, it's, uh, you know, you're going to have to do readings maybe for every class. You're going to have to do projects throughout the semester. Um, but, you know, most people that I talk to find it to be a pretty manageable course that you're still probably going to be taking, you know, um, 16 to 18 credits, I think is the typical experience. Um, some people may wind up going up to 20. I did that, but that's that's just, that was by my own choice. That's because I said I wanted to double major and also take Kilichand, um, which is definitely not something that anyone has to do. So if you are just majoring in something in Kilichand, you know, you can definitely uh, have a pretty uh, solid work balance and definitely uh, there's plenty of time to be in Kilich and be taking intense classes and still have a uh, great time at college as well. We had another question about the balance between STEM and humanities throughout Kilichon courses and in the curriculum. As um, you have probably noticed from the two faculty here, myself and Professor Dora, two directors here, um, we represent very different sides, chemistry, English, gender studies, and we have faculty teaching from all of the divisions across the university. So we really seek both to balance the STEM and, and the humanities perspectives, but also as we discussed when we were talking about teaching teams to bring them in fact together. So I'm teaching um, with social scientists and with STEM faculty in the course on forced displacement. Uh, Professor Dora was te teaching with faculty from the School of Public Health um, in the fall and from the College of General Studies, a, a specialist in, in rhetoric and writing. Um, so we're, we're not just trying to balance various divisions. We're actually trying to bring them together. I wonder if any of our students would want to speak to this balance between STEM and humanities as they experience it in our coursework. Yeah, I can talk about this. Um, so Kilichan's favorite word is interdisciplinary, and it almost becomes a joke between, you can see people smiling and laughing now. Um, it becomes a joke because we say it so much and we talk about it so much, um, but it really is true. I'm currently enrolled in the forced displacement um, a course with Professor Preston and an amazing teaching team from a bunch of different disciplines. Um, and in my contact section, which is like a smaller breakdown out of the big class where we focus on one specific area, my contact section leader is a professor of biomedical engineering. And for the first, I think, 10 weeks of the course, we didn't talk about engineering at all. We talked about race, we talked about gender, we talked about um, the legalities of, you know, do you have the documentation to prove who you are? Um, and all of the different different laws that go into, are you allowed to enter this place? Are you allowed to get food here? Um, so I don't, I would almost say there isn't even a balance because they're so integrated. Like it can be difficult to pick out, is this course about engineering and STEM or is this a humanities course because they're so intertwined. Um, and now we are moving into the engineering part of the course. And it's almost funny to hear my professor, who's a professor of engineering, speak about engineering, because for the past 10 weeks, I've heard him speak so much about, you know, what are the humanities of this? How can you treat these people with dignity? Um, how does gender and sexuality affect their experience in the camps? Um, so yeah, I would almost say that it's, it's not a balance because it's so integrated, if that makes sense. Absolutely, thanks, Marissa. A question here about how Kilichon can help with pre-med track students. Um, and, and this is interesting because I'm actually surprised that amongst the diverse array of uh, majors our students represent, we actually don't have anyone who's pre-med. We do have a heavy focus, I think, on pre-med students. Many, many students are pre-med, but also majoring in very, very different fields from the social sciences, humanities, as well as sciences. But I'll ask Professor Dort if she might reflect on how our curriculum might help a pre-med student. Goodness. Um... So there are so many different paths to be to be pre-med. Um, they, um, if you're if you're interested in medicine, um, so I would I would say two things. First of all, the average age of someone going to medical school is not 21. It is it is much later in life, and people just take a variety of paths to get there. And um, medical schools want that additional knowledge beyond just your your undergraduate training. So um, the the canonical um, natural sciences that you need include chemistry, 
biology, and now also includes biochemistry. On the math side, you need statistics. And you can, um, as you know, study these as part of a major, or you can study classics or economics or English and, and pick up those things on the side. So if you have an additional interest, I think Jackson mentioned this already, with Kilachan, and, and Marissa mentioned this too with regard to study abroad, you have to plan a little bit in the beginning, but I would argue that what uh, Kilachan does most to help you as a pre-medical student is to give you that broader awareness of, of people and our world and our society, and to give you the skills to think about it and talk about it and engage with it because the, the process of becoming a physician is, is long and there's a lot more involved in it than just doing well in organic chemistry. Um, and uh, I, I think Kilichon would be fantastic training for all of those different aspects that you're going to be challenged with in, in, in the natural sciences and beyond. Um, I, that's perhaps not as specific as you might like, but I think it doesn't doesn't need to be. So I have talked to a lot of chemistry majors that go on to medicine, and, and that's that's where I'm coming from. I will say that there is a fantastic pre-med office at Boston University that that our students, broadly speaking here at BU, work with, um, and certainly the Kilachan students do as well. We also, partially because we have so many students interested in medicine and public health, um, typically every year we have a panel of alumni come back and talk about their journeys towards medicine and public health. Um, and I'll also reflect, as I'm teaching 302, the course on the crisis of forced displacement, we have a lot of students who are interested in medicine who are, for the first time, they say, really feeling like they're thinking about the application of their skills to help with health concerns in refugee camps or in situations of humanitarian disaster. So it's been great to learn alongside them as, as they've been taking this journey through the course on forced displacement. I think that's it for the questions that we have open right now. Um, Oh, one just came in. This is a question subjective to majors and their workloads, but in general, have students found much time to participate in extracurriculars like sports or the TV network? Any thoughts on that from our students, extracurriculars and athletics? I can hop in. Um, I'm actually in a sport here at BU. So Personally, I think that Kilchan, the way it's structured is very flexible and allowing you to do whatever you want to do on top of the coursework. Um, I definitely have personally never had any problems. And a lot of my peers who are also in sports or extracurriculars like the TV network, um, actually one of my closest friends is in the TV network and she's never had a trouble. Uh, she's never had trouble keeping up with her work and what she wants to do. And I think, you know, the point of Kilchan isn't that it's something that you should be worried about at all times. It's, it's just a thing that you do and you can do whatever else you want. It's not really a problem. Thanks so much, Matt. One of the fun things about being part of Kilachan for me is um, learning about all of the activities that our students are involved in. And so I've been able to go see theater productions that our students have directed or acted in or been part of the crew on and then to see actually their friends from Kilachan um, join me at those events and support uh, their, their colleagues in these enterprises. And so you've got students who never thought they were super interested in theater, but because they were taking courses alongside a College of Fine Arts major, find themselves really engaged in the theater world. Um, one particular engineer I know of got so interested that he ended up uh, auditioning for plays and, and performing later on. And that's a really wonderful thing that I feel happens when you bring students from across the schools and colleges together, when they live together the first year and take courses together, they, they really are pushed outside of their zone of interest and experience. This is about all the time we have for today. Again, please join us at one of our future open house events. Please reach out to one of these fantastic ambassadors represented by the students here today with questions or to any of us. And 
we wish you well. We hope you and your families are safe and well during this difficult time and wish you all the best in the difficult decisions that you face as you choose a college over the next few weeks. Take good care and have a great evening.